Joining us is award-winning actor, writer, producer, and director Kelly Perrine, known for a multitude of roles on sitcoms including The Drew Carey Show, Hanging with Mr. Cooper, Nickelodeon's Night Squad, and One on One now being shown on Netflix. And he's that guy you never want to forget. Kelly, welcome. Well, what is up, young Mabel? How are you doing? Hey, hey, everybody, hey. <laughs> the adventure has begun. It's so lovely to meet you. It's nice, it's nice to meet you too. And so I'm glad we have a, a chance to, to chop it up a little bit and get to know each other a little bit better. That will be lovely. I've heard you say that people refer to you as that guy. Why is that? You know what? You, you know, this year marks my 26th year um, as a Hollywood actor. And um, a lot of times, you know, I've, again, I've done everything from the Drew Carey show, one on one, between brothers, parenthood. I just did a show called Night Squad. And so I've done a lot of stuff, but sometimes folks aren't able to put a name to a face. And so I'll be walking down the street and I can see them turn half a second later and go, wait, wait a second, who is that? Is that, you know, and they'll come up to me and go, hey, you're that, you're that guy from, how do I, are you, you go to my church? And I'm like, no, no, I don't think that's it. How is it I know you, that you were, you know, and I'm it, it, I'm one of those that guys, you know, it's like, hey, it's that guy from that thing. And they can't quite put it together. But but that's it's fantastic to at least be recognized. And um, as a 26 year, like I said, veteran, I, I, I look at myself as a journeyman actor. I've been able to sustain myself in this industry for 26 years. And so if somebody looks at me and goes, hey, it's that guy. Uh, that's all right, because that means that uh, that that guy has been that working. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely. Um, as we were prepping for this interview, I had the opportunity to touch base with you, and you shared with me that you just finished working on a Netflix production. Talk to us about it. Was that the first time that you were on a set since quarantine? Well, yeah. There's, yeah. You, you know what? The, you know, Netflix has been fantastic to me. Not only because my show One on One has now been uh, streaming. Uh, on Netflix again, we we shot it you know twenty some odd years ago, uh, and it's a show called One on One, and uh, it's now streaming on Netflix if people want to watch it. But um, I got cast in a show called Family Reunion, which is a fantastic uh, Netflix show starring Loretta Devine, uh, Richard Roundtree, you know people like that. Um, and it was the first time since COVID hit that I you know had a chance to work on like a major, you know, network and on a, a studio lot after 26 years. And things things have changed, you know, we're being tested every other day, which I appreciate because people want to make sure that, you know, you know, they're safe and their crew is safe and that the cast is safe. Um, it's funny to rehearse, you have full, you know, face masks and face shield. The world of acting, auditioning, all those things are changing, hopefully. You know, in the not too distant future, we can go back to being able to hug each other and being in the same uh, space without worrying about, you know, someone who sneezes. But right now, it's just something that we have to, you know, deal with in the acting world is, you know, especially because there's so much one on one interaction. And, you know, if, you, if you're doing a love scene, you can't, you know, be in a full gown. Um <laughs> So we're trying to figure it out out here in Hollywood because we have to make sure that people have stuff to watch and laugh at and care about and cry to while we figure out, you know, how the world is going to turn out on the other side of this. Well, so you mentioned the, sh the set that you were just on. When can people tune in? Is it something soon, next year? Well, the, well, the show is called Family Reunion, and it's actually on Netflix now. So if you want to go ahead and start watching episodes now and start to understand who the characters are and laugh and get caught up, uh, that would be great. So if you're on Netflix, go ahead and check out One on One and go ahead and check out Family Reunion. You mentioned One on One a few times. I'm curious, has, how have your fans from that period reacted to it? Or people that you know? You know what, it's, it's been, you, look, it's been mind-blowing, it, you know, it's been so positive and so amazing. So, so you know, I, I did that show when I was in my late 20s. So when I have people that go, you know what, we grew up watching you, part of me goes, really? How? And then I try to do the math in my head, I go, 
I guess if you're 20 minutes, I guess so, <laughs> which, which again, I take as a, you know, as a, you know, thank you, whoever's up there for giving me the longevity. But then I go, how crazy is that? And then they go, when, you know, I'm introducing my kids to the show for the first time. So we have people who grew up watching the show, introducing it to their kids. And I'm like, oh my good, you, you know, when I grew up, if I, you would have told me that, you know, you, something that I did, something creative that I was a part of would be multi-generationally positive, I would be like, get out of here. And, and the fact that that is what has happened is, is, is nothing short of just, just humbling, humbling for me. Well, I have to say that's probably one of the first shows that I got to know, that I got to know you. So I knew it's, I had seen you as a character actor in various shows, but that one, I actually used to watch that show. So when I got in touch with you, I was excited. I was like, oh, I remember him. <laughs> so well, congratulations. Well, th well, thank you. You know, the, the thing, the, the part of the thing about it is that, you know, I, my journey has been one that I really didn't start trying to do the Hollywood thing until I was out of graduate school. So I went to, I went to college out here. I went to undergraduate school at a place called Pomona College where I got my um, undergraduate degree in film studies. And then I went to a place called University of California, Irvine, where I got my master's in drama and acting. So I came out to Hollywood when I was 25. And I'm like, here I am, Hollywood. And they're like, so what? <laughs> so, so, you know, so those were some of the things that, some, you know, the one-on-one -on -one I got two or three years after I got out of school. So, yeah, it was one of the first things. So, you know, there wasn't that much more for you to know me from. You know, I wasn't a child actor that grew up out here and was trying to make it for 20 years. I was a college student studying acting who, you know, went at it hard and got my break. So when one-on-one -on -one came out, I only had a handful of shows that I had done and things that um, people could reference. Like, well, what else has he been in it? What else has he done? I don't recognize him. So I give a lot of thanks to people like Yunetta Boone, who is up in heaven. She is one of the um, creators of One on One. And people who took a chance on a college kid who wasn't a stand-up comedian, wasn't anything that people knew uh, and said, you know what, this guy is the right person for this part. And they took a chance on me because a lot of people wanted names. And again, 26 years later, I'm still not necessarily a name, but I'm a grateful actor who, um, who got that opportunity. And hopefully every time I got a chance, you know, at the plate, I tried to, you know, I tried to take it to deep left field. Well, I know that when you're not in front of the camera, you also enjoy producing, director, writing. In fact, you have a project, Downward, Downward Hero. Downward Hero. Can you talk to us about that project? What's the premise? Well, well certainly. You know what? I, um, you know, when you're an artist, when you're creative, it, it's, I believe it's very important that, you know, you know, actors especially. Because the thing about actors is that we're the low man on the totem pole. You know, you have the writers that write the script. You have the producers that try to get it made. You know, they try to get the money. They try to do all that. They package it. And then the actors are kind of like the last people that they bring in uh, for auditions. And so it's very important for me as an actor, and I stress this for actors who are out there, to find ways to keep yourself and put yourself higher on the totem pole. And you can do that by writing. You can do that by creating your own projects. You can do that by producing. You can do all these things can make it so you're not sitting there, you know, by your cell phone going, please, please ring. That is death to an actor. That is death to an artist. Painters paint. If they're in the studio apartment, they have paint. You know, uh, uh, musicians play their music. Actors have to create. So um, you can't wait for auditions. You can't wait for somebody else to validate you. So part of why I am now writing and producing and directing is because one, I think I, you know, I'm an artist and I have a number of creative threads that I would like to, to pursue. Uh, two, I, I, I'm trying not to rely on anybody else telling me that I'm allowed to succeed uh, uh, and I'm allowed to create. So I have a couple of projects, one of the ones I'm very proud of, 
And I know it sounds kind of Hollywood because I'm here in Hollywood and I'm, now, I get, I, now I do a lot of hot yoga <laughs> in Hollywood. Before everything turned down, you know, I was doing, doing hot yoga. Because um, I do, every once in a while, I do like to get, you know, my party on. Let me sip this for you. And the hot yoga sweats all that out. So as a fan of hot yoga, I came up with an idea for uh, a film, a short film that I wanted to a feature called Downward Hero. And the short film follows and the feature follows my character as someone who's very Zen-like, very Buddhist, um, you know, very Bruce Lee, be like water flow, some of, the, some of the yoga and some of the Zen practices that finds a way to take some of his very unique skills uh, uh, you know, spoiler alert, skills to be able to extract information from people. And he uses yoga positions and yoga postures in order to get people to tell them their secrets. And um, if you want to see the short film, you can actually go to kellyperine.com uh, where it's it's up and running. But I think it's very important to create your own your own work. So we've talked about some of the TV sitcoms that you've been on. But you've been in numerous films, including Sun Chaser with Woody Harrelson and Anne Bancroft, Trial and Error with Jeff Daniels and Charlize Theron. Not that I'm uh, pointing out names or anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, baby. Name drop, girl. Name drop. And Convincing Clooney, in which you starred with Rosanna Arquette and Amy Garcia, among other many other credits. So I'm curious. We were talking about your love about doing things behind the scenes so when you're on these particular sets are you also paying close attention to the director the producers and what's happening behind the scenes and absorbing that well sure, well, sure. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about uh you know being an actor right being a performer is that it's a collaborative skill the uh you know if i was playing a sport you know, the second baseman knows what the pitcher's job is and he tries to understand how he does his thing he understands where the center fielder is going to be. He understands that if the ball's hit out there, he needs to go and become the cutout man. It's all interrelated. And so in order, in order to, do, to, do, to do your job great, you have to understand at least to some degree what other people's jobs are. I found that a lot of times on sets, and, and I think maybe this applies to everything in life, whenever somebody is unsure about what they're doing or what they're connection to what other people are doing within the collective there's some fear there and there's uh they, they, they're looking around what am i supposed to do what am i supposed to do the, as an artist your job is to kind of absorb what everybody is doing and your your job is also to be a problem solver so when you understand what the director does and what the director wants from you you can more easily give that to him if you also understand what he's asking from the other actor um, the, the lighting person will be like, hey, can you move over to here? Because, it's, and so you have to figure out if moving from here to moving to here changes any type of intention is what's going on. Because it's, it's, it's nothing more than, hey man, this is where your light is and this isn't. So figure out a way to get here and act and do your, so it's very symbiotic. It's very interrelated. And so, I believe a good artist or a good anything, a good team member understands and appreciates, and I think this is a big part, appreciates what everybody else is doing. And I think all of our lives can be made easier if we all became better team players. And so I come from a background where, um, again, even when I'm number one on the call sheet or I'm number two on the call sheet, I'm there to service the directors, the writers, the producers, everybody else, you know, the, the, the network who put a million dollars into this project. Are there specific directors, producers, or actors that you would still like to work with? Oh, my, I mean, how much, how much time? <laughs> of, of, of course. You know what? I'm a, I'm, a huge, I'm a huge Spike Lee fan, so I would love to do something, you know, with you know with, with spike lee when you get a particular role how do you how do you prepare part of how i prepare too is and i think you know actors and people like that need to understand that the actor's job is to be knowledgeable 
if your character, if you have a period piece that takes place in 1950, you better read up on what was going on in 1950, what the style was, what people were wearing, what cars were being driven, who was the president. Actors, artists have to put in eight hours a day towards their job. And part of your job is reading what was going on in 1950, researching what the style was, understanding how people talked, reading a book from that, that's your job. And if you don't wanna do your job, or you want to half-ass it and you don't want to be good at it, then that's something that you need to, you know, people need to look at. I went to grad school because I wanted to study because I wanted to be great at what it is I chose to do. I could have been a doctor. I could have been a lawyer. I could have been a, anything. I chose to do this. So I chose to study and I continue to choose to do my work and read the script and research it and do all the things that I believe it will take for me to say one line differently or make them go huh that's that's the person we need for the part and the beauty is all of that research it doesn't doesn't go away if say you don't get the part it's all informative to the next part or, or it's informative to your memoirs or to the book you're going to write it's all informative knowledge is never a bad thing to obtain you're clearly very passionate about what you do. It's so wonderful to hear you talk. When I've watched you on, ca on camera. Your comedic timing is, is like spot on. And so I'm wondering, do you ever like channel certain actors? Because I know I have moments and I, and I don't do it intentionally, but the person that always comes to mind is Lucy. And I'm referring to like Lucille Ball. I'll have a moment. I'm like, oh wow, like that's such a Lucy moment, and I'll remember an episode, and it, and it, it'll make me laugh. It'll kind of get me out of the moment because it's like, oh wow, that's so something she would do. So are there, are there, are there times when you're on a set or you're reading the script, and because you do a lot of physical comedy as well, where does it come from? Does that come naturally? Because it seems seamless. It looks very natural. <laughs> Well, I mean, there's a couple things there. One, you know, I, I grew up and I, um, I'll, I'll kind of go backwards. And then I, I grew up and I was, I, was, I was a decent athlete. I was a wrestler. I played baseball. I played soccer. I was good enough to travel with a uh, select soccer team when I was 17 over in Europe and play soccer. I wrestled. And so the, the, the physical stuff I, I really enjoy because – I, you know, I enjoy movement and I enjoy contact and, you know, and, and getting, getting in there. Uh, and some of the slapstick stuff, I just love, I love, you know, you know, like Jerry Lewis. I, I love that, that type of, you know, you know, big, broad facial stuff. Sometimes it's too much, some, but the ability to be able to kind of throw yourself into a project also at times means being able to throw your body into the project. And so again, part of that means, you know, staying in some sort of shape. I'm not saying I'm, <laughs> you know, the most, you know, you know, jack, I'm, you know, I'm not the rock, but I'm, a, you know, but I'm a decent sized pebble who stretches, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And so I can, I can do some pratfall, do that type of thing because my body is, the, is an instrument. Our voice is an instrument. As an actor, this whole tool is the instrument. And again, you can't hide behind not, having a finely tuned instrument. And so in grad school, we did a lot of movement uh, in voice work and in, in undergrad, you know, in high school, I did a lot of sports. And so I try to incorporate it into it because if, if it, if it calls for the character doing something goofy physically, I want to be able to do it. I'm not saying I want to do all my stunts. I'm not trying to jump out of 10 story building. I'm like bringing another chubby Negro. To do that. I ain't trying to do all that. But I want to be, you know, you know, able to do that. I don't know if I necessarily channel anybody per se, but, 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 but I think we have, you know, people that inspire us. And, and, and sometimes it's subconscious, sometimes it's conscious. I don't ever go out and go, okay, what would so-and-so do in this instance? Um, you know, I like to think I'm, you know, original and creating my own thing, but, but, the through line to all of the people I'm talking about, you know, from Lucy to Jerry Lewis, 
to a number of the comedians or people that I see now, not even comedians, like actors who are straight drama is a commitment to what they're doing. You are so entertaining, which is a perfect segue because I like to have a little fun with my guests. And I thought uh, we would have a good time playing a game. Would you be up for it? Okay, sure. Yeah, let me go ahead and take this last sip of tequila. <laughs> I wasn't playing games now. Wait a sec. <laughs> it's not that type of game, although it could be if it was live. Okay, okay go, go ahead. That was water. Actually, it wasn't. But go on. That's a game. We're going to play my version of Zoom's Truth or Dare to Reveal. Wow, you're going to Zoom, Zoom Truth <laughs> or Dare. It's kind of like a new version of uh, Truth or Dare. Zoom Truth. Or dare to reveal. Oh my goodness. Exactly. I'm committed to this. <laughs> so, with that said, we are about to start Zoom's truth or dare to reveal. And I have game show music. Let's do this. Let's do it. Zoom shoot. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so I had to uh, prep us for the show. <laughs> so hey, baby, hey, you, better, you better go ahead and market yourself. You better go ahead and get music. You better brand it. You better go ahead and get them social media numbers up. I'm not mad at you. You better go ahead and get a big network job. I'm here for you. So today on Zoom's Truth or Dare to Reveal, we will, I, let me give you the instructions. So what is going to occur is the way this game will work is I will ask you, I will ask if you want to play Truth or the Dare to Reveal. If you select Truth, I will read a factual statement about your life. However, if you select Dare to Reveal, I will ask you a question that you will, that you will agree to respond to. Sounds good, Kelly? That sounds good. And I'll tell you what, here's what I'll do. I will I will do one and one. Why don't you ask me one truth and why don't you ask me one dare to reveal? Sounds good. Okay. So first one, truth or dare to reveal? Let's start with dare to reveal. Okay. You have referred but to- But you, you do understand, you do understand that both of these are kind of Asking the person to kind of, you know, come come correct with it, to kind of give something up. I get, I understand the wording, but it's all good. I get what you did. I'm here for you, girl. Well, Go the truth are facts that most people or fans of yours are going to be familiar with. The dare to reveal are things that probably your, your, your roommate may know, <laughs> your family members may know, but our viewers don't know. <laughs> well, I well, hello. Uh, are there any showrunners that are listening to that? Because give this girl the show right now. All right, I like that. I like that explanation. Fantastic. Go. I'm with you. So you asked for a dare to reveal. So my yeah. first question is: You have referred to yourself as flawed, but a loving human being. Share with us something that you consider a flaw. Oh my goodness! Oh, you went right. You went, went to my Facebook page. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, wow. Um, I love too much. No, I'm that's stupid. I'm I'm joking. You know, I I sometimes I'm not as patient as I can be. I'm I, I don't suffer stupidity well. Cause because I, I do believe that folks are intelligent. They're more intelligent than than then sometimes they're showing. And so I don't suffer idiots well because I expect people to be smart and educated and, and bright. And in 2020, uh, you know, up to it and progressive. And so one of my flaws is that I, I really, I need to learn to listen better. And so if I have a flaw, it's that you know, if somebody's telling me something, I need to take more time to understand what is underneath their belief. Because sometimes I have a very uh, binary, you believe this or you believe that understanding. 
And sometimes I don't take enough time to understand if somebody has a different opinion than I do, where that opinion comes from. So that, that very well could be a flaw. Thank you for sharing. I got you with that one. You really had to think about it. <laughs> well, I did. Not, not that I'm saying that I'm unflawed. <laughs> but again, I love my blemishes. Sisses. So that's what, that's why it took a second. That's why it took a second. So you said I could do one in one. So now a truth, a factual statement that you can confirm is you appeared on an episode of the Bernie Mac show. I did. You know what? God bless Bernie Mac. Um, I did. I did the pilot episode of the Bernie Mac show. And I can't tell you exactly what year it was, but um, it was myself. Uh, I believe it was uh, Bernie. It was... Um, Mencia, Carlos Mencia, a couple of people that you um, that you recognize uh, as kind of his poker cigar smoking buddies. And I, you know, it was the pilot episode. So I'm like, this is fantastic. This is going to be great. Um, right after that, I booked, I think it was one on one or a series regular on another show. So I couldn't continue doing the Bernie Mac show. But on the Bernie Mac show pilot, I played myself, a character named Kelly. And so they brought in another actor to play my part. And the character's name on the show was Kelly. And, you know, the actor, you know, the actor's name who came on was Michael Ralph. And Michael Ralph is a good friend of mine. And so Michael Ralph, when I watch the show, they're, they're, they're calling him Kelly because I had to leave the show and he had to come in and do the part. And I'm like, hey man, if there was anybody that I want, want to come in and, uh, and, and, and play me. Cause Michael is taller, better looking. <laughs> uh, all those good things. I'm like, yeah, yeah, call him Kelly. <laughs> and I still to this day use his photo for my Tinder profile. <laughs> that would well. That could still be a dare to reveal question. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no I, I don't use Michael. I don't use, I don't use your photo. Again, I use Denzel's. So it all, it all comes full circle. So you said I could do one-on-one. -on -one. So my next dare to reveal question is, is there a role throughout your career that you auditioned for, but didn't get that you thought you would have done an even better job at? What 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 thing, a better job a better job than the person that got it exactly huh you, you, you know what N no I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that just just no because you know my mom said um, you will be led to that which is yours and and I take that saying you know with me as I go through my Hollywood journey you will be led to that which is yours. So whenever I don't get a part or whenever I don't, you know, something doesn't, you know, I sh should have, should, I get rid of the word should. I'm not promised anything and I've done great and I've been on amazing shows and I will be on amazing shows and I've got, you know, you know, a house here in the hills and I help take care of my parents. So the word should hardly ever comes into my vocabulary. And I should have gotten that and I would have been better at it than them. Almost never, I say never comes into it. If, if something goes away, that means something better was for me. I will be led to that which is mine. I spend no time worrying about that. I spend time worrying about what I can, can control, like reading the script, like researching, like breaking it down, like making strong choices. All of those things I can control. The woulda, shoulda, couldas, I leave for, you know, whoever wants to do Where Is He Now stories. That was beautifully said. That was a, such a lovely Zen moment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, now a truth. So your father engaged in musical theater and you were on stage performing at a very young age. Yes. Oh, that sounds like fun. 
I thank my father for, you know, giving me a very early love of theater and love of performing. Like I, I grew up in central Pennsylvania. I didn't grow up in Hollywood. I was, wasn't trying to be a star, but my father was a professor at Penn State. So I grew up in central Pennsylvania. He was a fantastic singer. And so I went to him with him to rehearsals and stuff like that. And so I got into plays. I got into performing. I, I did all that. It was 45 years of just enjoying performing, enjoying being in front of people, enjoying the laughs, enjoying, uh, you know, the camaraderie of my fellow characters. Um, if there was something I enjoyed more, I would have done it. But I don't. There's nothing I love more than being on stage and, and getting that feedback and hearing people laughing. There's nothing I enjoy more than being on set and having folks around you and understanding that they're doing all this work so that you, that I look good, the people around me look good. There's, 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 there's no better place in the world. Uh, and if I thought there was, I'd, I'd go there, but there's not for me. Um, and so, uh, yeah, you know, my, you know, my dad got me into it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he did. I, you know, raised one up to him and, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm grateful, and I think that I, the best the best is actually yet to come for me, you know? Oh, absolutely. Now, dare to reveal, have you ever secretly, secretly taken something from a set to have as a keepsake? Oh, girl, shit, I steal stuff from the set all the time. <laughs> secretly. <laughs> Here's what I'm notorious for. You know, I, I don't, you know, when, well, I had a show called Night Squad. And when it um, when it when it ended, I went there the next day, and they actually gave me a lot of stuff. And so I have a lot of Night Squad paraphernalia here around the house. So I mean, I I do have stuff from sets that were given to me. But I am notorious for for set food, for hoarding set food. I'm a bachelor. I'm not a great great cook. But every whenever I go to the set, they have caterers and they have like shrimp and like salmon and steak and yeah. and they gotta and they gotta throw it out afterwards i'm like no i've been known to bring tupperware to a set i've been known to bring ziploc bags tupperware tinfoil i'm like no so if you're gonna throw it out put it right here into my tupperware and um come to the house in a week and i'm still gonna i'm gonna be eating off of it so i'm, I'm a notorious set food hoarder notorious that people know they're like where's you know so the caterers are like okay where's your tupperware i'm like okay right here put put the potatoes in here put put the steak in there put some rice no no the rice goes into the red top uh yeah they know <laughs> oh, gosh i didn't expect that answer <laughs> come on man i gotta eat gotta eat man I gotta eat oh that's great I was on a set, I, I've done some extra work prior to the pandemic, and, and and this was new for me. I thought it would be fun to explore it. And so I was on the set, of, I think of Manifest. And and these other extras, they, they do this on a regular basis. And I saw that at the end, they, they, were, put, they were taking food with them. I didn't say anything, because I really was, I was absorbing, I was learning, but I'm thinking. And then after, it, it was a particular, scene where we were actually on set for five days and my understanding is that extras usually don't get gigs that last a few days so it was lovely because i got to see these people for a couple of days and after maybe the third day i felt a little more comfortable about asking questions and i said is that allowed like you're like you're you know to take food and she's like yeah they're not going to do it i mean they're just going to throw it away so I remember the last day I actually did like in a little plate, <laughs> I set aside a few things. <laughs> yeah. And part of it I do think comes from the fact that I, I hate wasting stuff. I, I hate it. I, I know that there are people out there that are starving and, and why these sometimes I'm, I'm sure it's illegal reasons why they can't put it out there. Somebody gets sick. They can't give it away. I'm sure there are. But I, I hate the fact that, you know, all this good food is going to waste and just getting thrown out. And it just, it just, it just kills me. And so until we can find a way, you know, it's almost like my personal crusade not to throw this stuff out because there is so much need out there, you know. So that's, so that's a little bit of, you know, of how I, you know, how, how I justify it. 
Um, now, me robbing the ATM on set, <laughs> so that's a, I haven't found a justification for that yet. But the food thing you get. <laughs> I do. Well, this next truth was shared with me by a mutual friend that we have. And he said that for your 50th birthday, you rented out ice cream and food trucks, food trucks as part of your celebration bash. All right, give us details. And it, this was Danny out well, of anyway. <laughs> Yeah, my boy, Dan, you know, much love to, you know, to big, to big Danny. Um, look, man, part of me is like, I'm 50? Jesus, I, I just, I'm 51 now. And again, I feel completely blessed. Um, and so for my, for my 50th birthday, I'm like, look, let me go ahead and, you know, let me go ahead and blow, and, and, and blow the doors off it. You know, I had it here in my house. Um, I was going to get the floors redone and I had carpets. So I'm like, pour stuff on the carpets. Go <laughs> Put the ice cream in the carpets. It doesn't matter. Stop on it. I don't care. I'm getting it replaced. But I wanted, I wanted to have all the stuff that me and my friends were going to enjoy. Man, we had a DJ, I had an ice cream truck. I had... There's a guy who does, he has a company called Me So Corny. Um, and it's corn on, and he takes it and he shucks it and they put mayonnaise and butter. I had the Me So Corny guy there. Uh, it was off the chain. Uh, I had a band that I was in for years. We got the band back together. It was, I go, look, man, I'm only going to be 50, you know, one time. I'm going to tell everybody I'm 50 for the next three years. But I'm gonna do it one time, and so I, you know, I'm like let's let's, let's blow the doors off, and it was it and it was fantastic because I, I'm a big believer in understanding. I'm a big believer in going. You know what? Life is. We're here. You know, we're here. We're alive, and um, I'm gonna celebrate 50. I'm gonna celebrate 51. Anyone who's watching, wherever you are in your life, celebrate it because you're a precious being that's been put on this earth. Cel celebrate it, man. There's no mistakes out there. There's no mistakes out there. Kelly, you have been just absolutely delightful. Thank you for being such a good sport and playing with me. Uh, truth or dare to reveal? <laughs> well, th thank you. I, I, I love it. I truly think you should, you should try to do something with that. I see a TV show. I, I may call you back in a few days to bounce some ideas off of you. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm, I'm around, baby. Uh, Kelly, thank you so much for taking some time today and to talk to us, to talk to our viewers. I feel like this was a uh, catch up, catch up time for you and I after some of our conversations via text, online. And, and now this was catch up for you and your viewers and your fans who are so happy to see you back on stage, to be able to see one-on-one -on -one back on Netflix, to see you in an upcoming show, in, in an upcoming episode of Family Reunion. I mean, a lot of exciting things. Good. Yeah, a lot of good things are coming. You, you know, what? It's, it's been a very tough eight, nine months for everybody, and I do, and I do understand that. And so, if if you know, you guys want to go to Netflix and watch some one on one and and smile and laugh and um, take a break from all the craziness, but also know that this this too shall pass. And if we just kind of you know keep it contained and and wear our masks and do the things we have to do in order to get to the other side of this, the world will open up. But, you know, I believe in energy and the world is about abundance and all that stuff. And so, and, and, I, and I do believe that, um, you know, sometimes there's things that the world needs to shake off and we need to shake this off. And we will. And the two shall pass. So if there's anybody out there wondering about, oh, yeah, I, I get it. We're here. We're with you. Hold on. We're going to make it through and it's going to be hopefully even better on the other side. I believe so. And I know that I, I feel a little better on the other side after this conversation. You well, good. have brightened my day. Well, thank you for reaching out to me. Um, let me see what uh, I'm looking at. Oh, my football team is losing, so I'm glad I wasn't watching for the past hour and a half. So it's been better talking to you and looking at your beautiful face than my, than my team losing. You suck. You suck. And I'm back. <laughs> Thank you so much. Continued success. Stay safe. Happy holidays. Much love.